It's the National Football League on EA Sports, and we'll get to see a battle for conference superiority. It's the Detroit Lions and the Houston Texans on Sunday night primetime. From the stadium that hosted Super Bowl 51 back in 2017, we are inside NRG Stadium in Houston. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and as we look at this matchup, every time there's something different to focus on. So I'll just ask you, what do you see here in this one? Well, Rembrandt, you've given me a pretty blank canvas to focus on, haven't you? Yeah. Where do you think I'm going to go with this? Uh, secondary? You know me, you know me well, right? In a game like this, it's always about the secondary. Can they handle the passing attack and make a few plays? And we are underway from Houston. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And they'll have very good starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. Texans offense heading out behind their quarterback in his second season. Last year's offensive rookie of the year, C.J. Stroud. And he's coming off of a truly remarkable rookie season where he quieted a lot of his doubters in a most emphatic fashion. Remember, going into the draft, many thought he was the number two quarterback coming out of college. He proved quickly he was a top quarterback going into the NFL. One of the best rookie seasons by a quarterback in recent memory. And what's scary about it? He's not even close to reaching his ceiling. On the ground, this is Joe Mixon. And some room to roll now. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. 25 yards to pick up there and also a first down. Opening quarter, his opening carry of the game, and I think they'll give it to him a few more times, as they should. You're exactly right about that. With that type of a run, you want to repeat it many times until they show signs of stopping it. I think he did his visualization exercise before this one, and they're paying off. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. And the ball on the 30. Here's second and four. Once again, they run with Mixon. A pretty nice, strong run, but can't break away. Down just inside the 30. The time called here because a member of the Texans is in some discomfort. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Third and three. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. So they'll go ahead and accept the penalty. So following the holding call, what can they do here on third and long? Stroud to throw it. Flushed out right. Now he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. A good pick up there, a 22. Certainly not a positive sign if you're the D coordinator and you see your guys give up that space so early in the game. Third down, that's when the clamps are supposed to come out, but his ability to create things with his legs makes things difficult. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. From the gun, to give to Mixon. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. 47 yards rushing for him here. What a start to the ball game. It's first and goal. 
They've taken this opening kickoff and marched it right down the field defensively. Not much resistance. And that's the point because my admiration is for the guys moving the ball right now. They know what they're doing. Their plan is working. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Joe Mixon taking it in from a yard out. And the Texans put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. So he had the nice run to get him down there, was stopped just short of the goal line, but they go right back to him, CD, and he delivers to finish the drive off. A little extra determination there, don't you think, partner? You notice he didn't tap on his helmet and say, get me out after the run down to the end zone. He said, I almost got in. I'm going to get in on my own. I'm staying in, and he carries it across the goal line. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. A drive that time of six plays. And it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. And out come the Lions for their first drive behind their ninth-year quarterback in year number four with Detroit. It's Jared Goff. It's hardly an exaggeration to say that Goff has revitalized his career these last couple of years. And he's rewarded for it during the offseason, as Detroit has certainly made sure everyone knows he's their quarterback for the future. It's clear that they believe in him, and he's done nothing to sway them from that belief. Goff in this Lions offense, set for a first and 10 at their own 27. They'll send the big tight end in motion right. Here's Goff. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver, and it results in an incomplete pass. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Goff now looks to throw. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Uh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. On fourth down, Jack Fox on to punt for Detroit. Back deep is Steven Sims. So just a three-yard return following a punt of 45. And the Texans will take over. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. They've got the 7-0 lead. Now they've got the football back after their defense got the stop, CD. And you get the feeling if they could score here, they really have all the momentum on their side. And you just wonder right now, is the quarterback and the play caller totally in sync? Are they of one mind that, hey, what worked last time? Let's keep doing it until they stop us. Or do they go to a different section in the playbook, show them something different? Either way, they want a repeat of their first drive. Inside handoff to Mixon. And he'll scratch out a yard up to the 30, and that's all. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Third and nine here. 
And Stroud now to throw. He's going to float this one deep right side. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Good coverage there by Carlton Davis. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. Here's Tommy Townsend on to punt. Back deep, Khalif Raymond. And the fair catch is made at about the 27-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return, and the Lions will take over. The Detroit offense ready to begin their drive. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. Let's see if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here, too, after a good stop. What a luxury to have a tight end that can not only catch it, but then can run after the catch like that. What was the old expression back in the good old days that they used to carry pianos yeah. on their backs <laughs> when they were cat after they caught the football? Someone would stop and bang out a tune along the way as well. <laughs> but nowadays, these guys are essentially bulked up wide receivers, and they are a full part of the passing game, and we see a lot of big plays as we just saw there. Back to throw, gone. That one almost intercepted, but it's incomplete. Not a good throw there, and it'll be second down. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. Here's Goff. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. And that's on the guard, Kevin Zeitler. Temporarily out of field goal range now as they come up on a second and long after the holding call. Going up the gut, Montgomery. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. So I like the wise play he made there. Get it to the sideline out of bounds where no one's going to have a chance at it. So now on comes the field goal unit. And wow, this is no ordinary try here. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. Well, Brandon, anything beyond 50, you start rolling the dice a bit. And once you get up around 57, 58 yards, the chances of making it go down dramatically. And sure enough, this one winds up no good. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. He's got this one to Hutchinson. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. And I think he just wanted to get the ball to one of his playmakers to see if they can make something happen, but he ends up throwing into a crowded area, and after the catch, he isn't able to do much with it. Now a second and two. Mixing up the middle. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, 
They're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roll them and hit. Oh, moving from his tight end spot there. Do you think that perhaps the play call was for him? Well, that's a tough, costly penalty because now it makes it third and six after the false start. Throwing now is Stroud. And under the Lions' pressure, he's brought down. And the defense coming through on third down, a loss of seven to bring up fourth. Now, that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. Here's Tommy Townsend now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. And yeah, they were in field goal range the last time out, but couldn't connect. And it's early in the game, so I don't think that the confidence just goes entirely out of, you know, running your kicker back out there. But let's face it, some coaches have a little bit less patience for that than others. Let's see if they call the game differently now in terms of what they do on drives and not try and settle for field goals. So first and 10 now from the 30. In motion goes Patrick. Golf. Throw caught by Raymond. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. It's a gain of 34. That is the exact right play call against that defense. So a hat tip to the offensive play caller because he won that part of the chess match. But give credit to his players as well. They won the execution part of it. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 36. And motion left goes a tight end. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Here's second and seven. Now golf. Open man is Raymond. He's got it. And that'll get him to first down as they get nine yards out of that quick slant. And the throw and the catch were just fine. But against zone coverage when you run a drag route, what you're hoping for is he makes the catch and makes someone miss, and they don't there. Very difficult route to run when everyone has their eyes back towards the quarterback and they're able to see the route develop. They'll fake the handoff. Now golf. And this one almost intercepted. Had a chance to come down with it in the end zone, but could not hang on. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Now a play fake, and it's golf. Finding his big receiver, Patrick, over the middle. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. And a nice gain of 21 yards. That crossing route is so effective when you hit it just right because you get a guy on the move, and then we see the end result there. It's a nightmare for the defense. They got a guy with a full head of steam. Not only does he catch it, but he picks up additional yardage after it. Now it's gone. And he's got his man. It's caught for a Lion touchdown. Brock Wright 
from three yards out. And the Lions are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. We always admire a guy who can go through his progressions and find the open receiver. I believe we just saw that there. And we admire him just a little bit more when it goes for a touchdown. Extra point attempt to follow here. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. So that a seven-play, 80-yard drive. And it's capped off by a touchdown for the Lions. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. And that play came together really well for them as he found open space, makes the catch, and gets down to the one yard line. You know he's kicking himself right now. He thought he had a chance to get a touchdown and put that in his ledger. Instead, his team gets a chance to cash in over these next few plays. And down he goes at the 49, a three yard pickup. Oh, I see you nodding your head along with me, partner, because it's pretty obvious what they were trying to do there on the drag route. With his speed, they're hoping he can turn the corner and maybe take this to the house. But that was excellent work defensively to make sure once he caught it, he wasn't going anywhere. Out of the shotgun, they run with Mixon. And they nearly sprung him that time as he takes this all the way down to the 37. 64 yards rushing for him now as he has gotten the night off to a hot start. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. A minimal gain as we tick down inside of a minute remaining in the opening quarter. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. Stroud looking to throw. He gets this one to Mechie. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And he's going to be touched down, but he's got the first down. These two teams all tied after one. Ready for the second quarter from Houston. It's the Texans in possession of the football as they go to work on a first and goal. They'll give it to Mixon. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. Another try for Mixon. 
And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. Joe Mixon with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Texans have taken the lead. So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack. And you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line. And he's able to take it into the end zone. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Oh, a good return up past the 30. And they nearly broke that for more, but as it is, still a good return. They'll start the drive right around the 37. The Detroit offense ready to begin their drive. After that last score we just saw, now 14-7, so a chance to march down the field here, try to tie this football game. To throw is Goff. This one swung out to Montgomery, and that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal... Get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. In motion goes Patrick. Out of the gun, golf. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Looked like both sides were anticipating a quick throw there, and the defense was ready to jump in and deny it, and they did. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. They'll run it. Here's Montgomery. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. The defense stiffens to force fourth down following that first down gain of eight. Another example right there of how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they're bringing your tight end, keep him in, your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. 39 yards on the punt, just two on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. The Texans offense and running back Joe Mixon set to take over once more. Now he's been a tough man to stop in this first half. He's putting up some big numbers already, and we have yet to reach halftime. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Woods the receiver in motion left. Mixon with a first down carry. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly. And that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Here's a second and eight. Play action. Stroud now. 
This ball caught by Mechie. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 44-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Stroud off the play fake. Oh, tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Pass the 20. And they will finally get him, but not until he's all the way down inside the 15-yard line. So that changes things. You get the interception, and then to boot, a good return tacked on. And really, it was down to him versus the quarterback on the return, and that's one you would think the defender would win. But a nice job there of seeing the play all the way to the end and making the tackle by the QB. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. After the interception, here's Gall. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And the Lions are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Montgomery is not going to get back to the line of scrimmage as they'll tackle him at the three. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. There's Goff. The quick slant caught. Only three yards there on the completion. That'll lead to a third and goal. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's, and he's going to take it in for a Lion touchdown. Jameer Gibbs... It's a one-yard touchdown run, and the Lions are an extra point away from drawing level. But they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker just has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although, I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. Point after, right down the middle. And we are tied at 14. So that drive, four plays. And it was all capped off by a touchdown run from Jameer Gibbs. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And they will leg him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. They start from scratch here, so to speak. 14 all following the interception last time that led to a score. Now they've got it first and 10. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, just missed that one. A handoff to Mixon. Very 
goes again. 118 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. Pretty explosive run on that inside handoff, and when you're a runner of his caliber, you don't need a big crease. You really don't, but also what we're seeing is an offensive line that's taking charge at the point of attack, aren't we? Not only are they controlling the initial contact, they're actually utilizing what they call the strain the next two to three seconds to continue to move people. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Over the middle, that's caught by Mechie. And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Here's Stroud. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. The offense on third down tonight, just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. A shotgun snap to Stroud. This will be complete to Mechie. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the line, 16. 12 yards on third down as the drive rolls on. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Here's a give to Mixon. And he takes us down to about the 12 for a gain of three. They'll come up second and seven. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. And this is going to be incomplete. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catching the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Now Stroud. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Touchdown, Texans! Dalton Schultz, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Texans have moved out in front. For good reason, quarterbacks want to get the ball to the perimeter to their wide receivers for big plays. But in this situation, it felt like, based on coverage, he knew that he wanted his tight end to have the football, and for good reason. On for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbairn. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. So that drive goes eight plays, and it was the tight end Dalton Schultz on the touchdown reception to cap the drive. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. They'll look for a drive to tie this up down 21-14 as they have it first and 10. And a short pick up to about the 27. It'll be second down. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. 
Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going, and then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. They'll fake the give. Now gone. throw is going to be incomplete. So the pass goes out of bounds, but he was not outside of the tackle box when he threw that. He's got to be careful. You and I both know if it's even close, they're going to give it to the quarterback. They don't want to throw that flag unnecessarily. So if you're just in the area, you're going to be okay. Play action. It's gone. Looking right side, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the former first rider, Jimmy Ward. And they will finally get him, but not until he's all the way down inside the 15-yard line. Well, and I saw the pressure coming out, and that just looked problematic. Hit him as he threw it, and the interception ensued. Let me pay homage to the man who stood in this spot before. He always talked about how much pressure is in the face of a guy, and can he step into a throw. And when you can't do that, oftentimes interceptions result. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Stroud to throw it. Over the middle complete. It's Schultz. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because... He really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. Only gets a yard, but it's enough to set him up first and goal. Sometimes I get almost mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, those eyes that carry their feet to open spaces, make people miss. I just love watching those guys go to work. Mixon. Touchdown, Houston. So his big first half continues. His third touchdown already. We'll have to keep watch as this game goes along how much they want to continue to ride him because he could be on his way to a record-setting performance. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. He's got it as they double up the lead. This one's now 28-14. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Detroit offense ready to begin their drive. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. Back to throw, golf. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. And he goes out right around the 39.
Third down and one. Goff now looks to throw. And that is incomplete. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. On oh, the return is Sims. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And they will take over first and 10. The Texans offense and their running back getting ready to go back to work. And as a play caller, when you've got a guy who's running like this, you lean on him and your offensive line. He's had big hole after big hole to run through in this first half. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. From the 28, it's second and five. Stroud. Now throw right side here, going to be incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there is no way that ball was going to be caught. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Throwing now is Stroud. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. The Texans send the punter out as he'll come on to kick this one away. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive as they take over with exactly one minute to go here before intermission. Open man right side is St. Brown. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Now second and five. They'll send the tight end in motion. Goff now to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Patrick. The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Goff now looking to throw. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. Now a second and ten. To the air again, Goff. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. 
He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. From the gun on third down, golf. He sets to fire deep. It's caught inside the 25. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. That hold coming from the left side of the line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. Penalty against him. Following the penalty, Montgomery. And they'll indeed stop him on third down. And now what do you want to do with your timeouts? Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. Yeah, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. The home team's offense and their running back getting set for this next possession. And he's been the focal point of this offense. And when you get a performance like this, you can almost invariably add that the offensive line play has also been stellar. And that's definitely been the case here. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. And Stroud now to throw. Caught by Woods. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Stroud looking to throw. Looking for Woods again, and he finds him. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Back to throw. Stroud. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Stroud working out of the gun. And that is incomplete, stopping the clock with five seconds to go. Well, that play was certainly a little bit different because on the previous play, he was sacked. This time, protection a lot better, had time to survey the field, and still couldn't find an open receiver. Now with five seconds left, not really enough time to run another play and then stop it, so on comes the field goal unit. And that is no good. And this will remain a two-touchdown game. One of the few things that hasn't gone right in this first half. They had a chance there for late points, but this one winds up off the mark. Final shot before break here. Golf. Trying to lob it in there, but it's incomplete. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report.
It was Joe Mixon who had it working in the first half. He's up over 100 yards rushing for the game already, and he scored three times as well as they went to him early and often, and with good reason. All right, Coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. It'll be Lions football to start the second half, and they trail here as we get back underway on EA Sports. Unable to corral him, he fights through. And a good return, able to get out across the 35 to the 36. The Detroit offense ready to begin their drive. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. And that's hauled in by St. Brown over the middle. And St. Brown going to have the Lions first down as he's up to the 47. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Up the middle, it's Montgomery. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Here's Goff. Oh, a short pass here, taken in by Laporta. Two yards on the pickup there. And they'll be faced with a third and inches. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll try the middle with Montgomery. So he fought off the tackle, and that effort gives him the first before he's brought down. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Now gone. Over the middle and taken in by Laporta. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. From the 32-yard line now, here's second down and one. And off comes to Montgomery. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Gone. Got St. Brown running the quick slant here. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Here now, second and four. Out of the gun, Goff. This to the portal right side. A six-yard pass on back-to-back -back plays. Picks up the first. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is that right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, 
And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. But you know that old expression, it's not my night? It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. And that'll be a free five yards for the offense. Just like a tennis match, that's just an unforced error. Stay alert, don't jump early, and give them free yardage. Second and two now. The penalty leaves them in pretty good shape. Now it's gone. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And the Lions are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. They'll run with Montgomery. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. David Montgomery punching it in from a yard away. And the Lions have cut it back within a score. Well, he'd been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. Point after try, forthcoming. He's got it, and they're back within a touchdown at 28-21. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it was David Montgomery's touchdown run that polished it all off. This game back within a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. The home team's offense and their running back getting set to go once more. And as we roll through some of the highlights, we see how crucial he's been to their success in this one. When he's in this type of a groove and his offensive linemen are creating running lanes for him, he can really put on a show, and he's done so here. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. And maybe some renewed pressure on this unit following the touchdown a moment ago. It's back to a one-score game. And because of that pressure, because it's now a one-score game, they know this is where you need to slow the momentum change because otherwise that could overrun your team. You've got to be careful right here. Uh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up, converged on his man, and broke the play up. Delson in motion. Here's a fake on the jet sweep and a run up the middle with Mixon. And this defense able to plug him up there as he'll get a yard to the 35. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. And they'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Here's Stroud. And that will be in. 
incomplete. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. On is the punter Townsend as he gets this one away. 47 yards on the punt that time, just one yard on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. Golf. Three, but he overshot him and it's incomplete and that is every quarterback's worst nightmare you had the perfect play call the seams parted perfectly you had your guy wide open he could have run for days but he overshoots him and that's one he'll think about for the next month to throw is gone looking left side and he's got a man that's Patrick and he gets it here to right around the 24 before he's out of bounds. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Now golf. They'll set up the screen to Montgomery. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. 15 yards for the Lions there on a first down. Well, they certainly had their share of troubles running the football in this one, but this play is almost an extension of the running game right here. They set up the screen, let him work out in space on the perimeter, and he turns it into a big pickup. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. A give. This is Montgomery. And some good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. Another nice gain. 13 yards that time and another first down. Brandon, I think you and I were both raised the same way in the game of football. You run to set up the pass, but I think we've discovered in this NFL, a lot of teams pass to set up the run. And that's what they've done throughout this game. They've aired it out, thrown it around the yard. Now they've come back to the running game, and they find a way to be successful with it. And this time, the yards won't come so easy as they'll, in fact, tackle him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. Play action. Here's golf. And that'll be caught. It's St. Brown. And they do finally get him, but he makes it all the way to the six. A big play there for Detroit. 43 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. A give to Montgomery out of the gun. And he takes this one in for a Lions touchdown. David Montgomery with now his second touchdown of this third quarter. And the Lions are an extra point away from evening this one up. Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three downs, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Now the try here for the point after. He's got it. This thing's turning a bit wild here. We're tied at 28. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it was David Montgomery's touchdown run that polished it all off.
So right back to square one, tied at 28 as he kicks it away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And their lead has evaporated in this third quarter. It's tied once more as they begin with a first and ten. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. And this is incomplete. And I think he was a little surprised to see the ball sitting out there like that. That's a ball he had a chance to come away with, but it winds up an incomplete pass. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Stroud to throw it. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he takes it all the way down to the 28-yard line. A huge play there for Houston. 41 yards. <laughs> well, this game has certainly had no shortage of offense. Both teams have been revved up from the start. And here's yet another big play. Boy, both defense have just got to be dragging out there because they've been run ragged throughout. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Play action. Here's Stroud. And he finds his target. It's Schultz. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. Now despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. Stroud. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Third and five. And throwing again is Stroud. He's got his target. That's complete. And it's going to be another first down as he'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 12-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Throwing now is Stroud. This is caught. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. Second and one from the two. Inside handoff to Mixon. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. They give him two yards there as they're set up now with a first and goal. This has been an up-and-down, back-and-forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive take a little bit of the wind out of their sails kind of settle things down a little bit a field goal could get them the lead but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal here's a run with Mixon and this time he is in yes. Joe Mixon 
taking it in from a yard out. And the Texans answer back with a touchdown of their own to break our tie and take the lead here in the fourth. And this is the time of game where offensive lines can really dictate a team's fortunes. It's been a tough battle. They've been out there for a long time. But this was a question of who can wear down who. And that's excellent work to put a long drive together and finish it with the touchdown run to take the lead. On for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbear. It's up and good, and they jump back ahead, 35-28. That time, a nine-play drive. And it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Lions offense and Jared Goff set to take over once more. And this defense might be about ready to wave the white flag. Nothing they have tried to throw at him has been that successful. He just processes things so quickly and makes the right read seemingly every time. The Detroit offense ready to begin their drive. And now after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. Throw to St. Brown, complete on the left side. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need, down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. Here's Goff. He'll get this one to Patrick. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 16 more on that one and another first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. From the gun, it's a give to Montgomery. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to the feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Flag comes in. This might be a free play. And this one drops incomplete, but I think the defense jumped. Well, we looked at each other right when he flinched. We knew that that flag was coming. Yeah, offsides, easy call, mark off the five, and keep it moving. So after the penalty, now they need just a yard on second down. A little short pass here, taken in by Laporta. And he takes this one in for a Lions touchdown. Sam Laporta, 31 yards. And the Lions are an extra point away from tying this game here on the fourth. And we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Now the try here for the extra point. And no sweat, he puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. Just a four-play drive that time, and the end result, a Detroit touchdown.
Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. They no longer have the lead after that last touchdown, all tied up in the fourth quarter, and a chance for this offense to mount a potential game-winning drive right here. And his play caller does a nice job of giving him an easy throw to start this drive, and he takes advantage of it. The completion sets up a manageable second down. So from the 37, here's second and a couple. Caught left side, here's Dell. They'll wind up getting just a yard. And now two yards to go on third down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. The offense on third down tonight, five out of nine thus far. Here it's third and two. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Texans first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard gain there on third and two. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. And Stroud now to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Kind of a fine line when you're setting up the screen. You don't want to throw it too early to have the defense react too quickly. And you definitely don't want to throw it too late. And that way it's not formed perfectly. Got to make sure you hit it just right. Second and ten. Mixing up the middle. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Officially nothing on that one, no gain. So they're left with still 10 to go on third down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Stroud out of the gun here. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. From here on, any score could be the winning one, and he is certainly aware of that. Look at the way he locked in on that marker and made a mad scramble to get to it for the first down. In motion right, that's Dell. Play action, Stroud now. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. Second and nine from the 44. A shotgun snap to Stroud. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. And in the second half of a tie game, every decision gets magnified. And here, if he forces this ball, it could be intercepted. So that's the prudent play to just airmail it out of bounds. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. Stroud working out of the gun. He wants it all for the end zone. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Ah, oh, that would have been a nice one to hit on in a tie game. You start to think that one big play, maybe the next big play, could turn out to be the game winner. They took the big shot, but it winds up incomplete. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line. And it continues into the end zone for a touchback. The Lions offense and their quarterback headed out for this next possession. And we'll take you through some of the highlights here. You'll notice he had a hand in a lot of them so far. He's got this offense rolling right now.
The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. Into the hands of Patrick left side. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. That'll go for a gain of seven. And it'll be second down. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. They'll bring a tight end in motion left. Goff now to throw. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. That'll put him at 66 receiving yards now for the game, and he's got a first down. When the offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Throwing again is gone. This one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. A shotgun snap for Goff. He'll leave it for Montgomery complete. Runs through the contact. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Oh, I came to my feet on that one. I thought he was getting close to breaking that one big, but in the end, give some credit to the defense, finding a way to get to him and forcing a third down. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. Now, a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. That fourth quarter, maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the legs still there. This has been a tough game. Here comes the Lions punter now. As he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Here's Stroud. Over the middle, that's caught by Mechie. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. 19 yards there on the catch and run. I like what I'm seeing from them here. A tie game in the fourth quarter. They understand the situation. They don't need to be in any rush. Go ahead and huddle up and run your offense. That last completion put them in a nice position to take the lead in this game. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Stroud looking to throw. And the Lions pressure too strong. Down he goes. Alex Anzalone, his second sack of the night. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward. And how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. Oh, 
Now Joe Mixon. 139 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's going on. I was pretty surprised there when they lined up to run it on second and long, but it worked out for him. It certainly did, and that requires some confidence, some fortitude, and a little bit of hope, doesn't it? You hope you catch the defense just right and break off a big run to help yourself out on the next down. That is caught, and he will be taken down with a big play there as it comes just as we reach the two-minute warning. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. They've got it first and ten as they search for a go-ahead score. Now Mixon. And not much running room. Down to the 32. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. They'll come up now, second and nine. Once again, they run with Mixon. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as he'll get it with still a minute 20 left to go in the game. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and 10 now. This is Mixon. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. The Lions now are going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Second down, eight yards to go. Mixon with it. And this will be a gain of six when it's all said and done. Down to the 15 from the 21. Here now, third down. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. All three timeouts still in their back pocket. Here's first and 10. A handoff to Mixon. And that's a touchdown as they've broken our tie here in the final minute of the fourth. So it's a high five for that one. His fifth rushing touchdown of the game as he draws ever nearer to potentially making a run at an NFL record. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it's capped off by the late touchdown. It's a seven-point lead here in the final minute of the game. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The visitors' offense and their quarterback set to take the field once more. 
And he has been masterful so far in leading this offense. He's kept the mistakes to a minimum. He's been on point with his passes. And he's generally been one step ahead of this defense all game long. Here's first and ten. Now it's gone. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this one is incomplete. These are the spots, this stage of the game, where it pays to have speed on the perimeter, does it? It certainly does. And in the second quarter, he may very well run by him. But in this situation, I know as a defender, I'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with him stride for stride. Now gone. Incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. Probably time for two more shots, and ideally, they'd like to get the midfielder cell so they have a chance at a Hail Mary on the final play. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. Goff now to throw. And that one too wide. And incomplete. This defense looking impenetrable now. Three straight incompletions. They're giving them nowhere to go with the football. Maybe a little frustrated back there. Oh, there's no doubt about it. When you've missed on three straight, there's going to be some frustration. But now he's got to make sure that that frustration is temporary, not lingering. Big throw coming up. Desperation time for Goff on fourth. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he gets all the way down to the 30-yard line. That was a long shot, but they did get one final chance to try to score and overcome this small deficit. No touchdown, though, Charles. And that brings this one to a close. Yeah, I think Hope was wearing one jersey, and Worry was wearing another on the other sideline as that final snap played out. Now, we've seen some incredible plays to win games before, but in this case, I think the distance is just a little bit too great for it to happen here. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Texans as we say so long from Houston.